Good afternoon Spartans. Welcome to another tutorial. This one is on the photo clipping type. Of course we've done a uh, couple days of practice and so now it's your turn to make your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us through each each one of the requirements and then you're going to see how it's done. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a photo and the photo should be a, either a person or a thing and it has to be a photograph. So in other words, you can't use any logos. You can use a uh, cartoon if you wish. But remember, no logos, no simple shapes, OK? So first thing we're going to do, I'm going to minimize the window here, go into Photoshop. And what I've done first is I've copied um, this famous basketball player. You probably recognize Michael Jordan. I come in here and go to New. Type in first initial, last name, underscore, and we're going to call it again, photo clipping type. And make sure it has 72 resolution, but you don't want to touch the width or the height, because remember, we want to make sure we paste the picture exactly the way it is. So I'm going to do control V. All right. Next thing you're going to want to do, as it says uh, here, is to use the QS tool. That stands for Quick Selection. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do that and get it to a nice, decent-sized brush. Okay. Okay, I briefly paused the video and made my selection. Okay, I want to save some time on the, on the recording. So once you get your selection, you're going to want to go into the path palette. And let me see, let me get my workspace back. So I hit default workspace. And you'll find your paths palette, and it usually embedded it within the... Uh, same area as the layers palette, so you just click on the path palette, drop down that arrow, and then choose make work path. And then you want to just keep it at 2.0 pixels, the default tolerance. Say OK. Go back into layers. And first thing I do is I like to turn the eyeball off. Now, due to my hasty selection, you can see some problems here. I actually like those indentations, but I'm going to fix it nonetheless. So you're just going to take your white arrow and you can alter it, just move it in, create a better shape um, by using that direct selection white arrow. Okay? And you know, it may not take much to do. Just make sure we understand what we're doing here and understand the image. If it's totally uh, um, unclear as to what, what we're actually looking at, then you might want to rethink the, the actual shape. Not all images work well as shapes. So I think we all know that this is a basketball player. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go to this black white circle here at the bottom of the layers palette and choose solid color. And all that does is it creates a vector um, shape. Um, and so then you may choose any color you want. I'm going to stick with the uh, Chicago Bulls colors. I'm going to say OK to that. I'm happy with that color. Okay. Now, you might consider using your free transform and just resizing in case you think it's too big for that canvas. Okay, you always have that option. Now, before I get ahead of myself, don't forget to change your image to six inches. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We've done that several times for the other projects. So I'm going to go up to image, image size, and all you do is change the width. Remember, it's under the document size and say OK. Alright? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my type tool and I'm going to click on the canvas. And as soon as you do that, you're going to get a type layer. I'm going to go ahead and type bulls. Give her 
of Chicago Bulls. And I bring it above the image. Okay, you want to overlap it over the image. And our um, requirements here says to make a word, you're going to clip the photo and you're going to alter the type, also known as a clipping mask. And so right now, uh, I'm going to first clip it. So I'm going to hold down Option. I'm going to get my cursor in between the two layers. Get that little black circle, one on top of the other, that little icon there, and click. And you can see how the layer indents. You see a little arrow that points downward. So that indents, and you can see the result. Definitely have a, a clipping effect, OK? All right, so you can move either the clip word or you can move the image. Both will do the same thing. Now, while it's clipped, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, rotate it and hit return. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my character palette, make some adjustments there, um, and play around with that. So you can even change the type for some, some letters. You know, you're not limited to one single um, font family. Okay. What we want to do though is make sure that we can actually see the word. Okay, and I am not quite seeing that, so um, I'm gonna have to lower that size there. Um, you might even consider um, duplicating the layers. So I'm gonna try that. And you can see I got one on top of the other, and I'll just move that in place and maybe rotate that. Now that's a new new feature. We didn't really practice this, but not hard to do. You can just do Control J or you can drag it into Create New Layer and it just makes a copy. Okay? Back to the requirements. It says to add layer styles to the word. Okay, I'm going to do that now. I'm going to double click that layer and I'm going to add a drop shadow. So that's what that's what a layer style is. Now it can be anything you want. You can add a couple if you wish. So I did an outer glow and a drop shadow. I'm going to say OK to that. I'm also going to do a, a layer style on the word that's being clipped. Notice the outer glow that I just applied. Control 0. Get it a little bit larger. Now you can see both. Okay. Now, no need to keep the photo, so I'm going to just delete that. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a gradient background. Now, I haven't taught you guys how to do gradients, and that will come later. For our purpose, you can just uh, merely fill it with a solid color. Okay, I wouldn't choose black necessarily for your solid, otherwise we might not see that uh, drop shadow. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer above the background, and this is where my custom brush comes into play. Okay, I think I'll just do Jordan. That'll be the name of my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and create a custom brush. So I'm going to go to New, and I'm going to do 3 inches by 3 inches. And I'm going to say OK. No need to name it. Now I'm not going to do a whole lot on this, since there's already a uh, tutorial on it. I'll just call it Jordan. And I'm going to do it quickly here, because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to call this Jordan, take off the background, and I'm going to lasso around Jordan. I'm going to make a brush set called Jordan. OK. Delete that. Say no. I'm going to come over here now and grab that brush. There's Jordan. Don't forget, you're going to want to change the, the, uh, all the different effects that we talked about in my other video. And I'm sort of losing it right now. So there we go. Here's some spacing. Maybe I'll do, yeah, that's good enough. And I can change the color of that. Uh, maybe do nice um, contrasting colors and just bring it up. Okay. Now, for purposes of the video, I just went quickly with that, but you're going to want to fine tune that, make it a little bit uh, nicer. I think that's the general effect we're after. Okay, so I hope that helped. I'm going to go ahead and flatten that image, and that's really what we're looking for. Okay, good luck and have fun. Hope you learned something.